Welcome back to Atlassian Team Tour Government. I'm Cameron Deach, Chief Revenue Officer for Atlassian. In the last session, I talked about what it takes to transform an organization and the important roles that culture and people play in any agency transformation effort. And now I'd like to continue the conversation. I'm joined by Christopher Copeland, the Chief Technical Officer for Accenture Federal Services. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for having me, Cameron. I'm great. And hey, thanks for, thanks for taking the time. I'm sure you're busy. Um, as a trusted agency partner, Chris and the team at Accenture Federal Services bring together mission expertise with proven innovation and leading practices to help the federal teams transform and evolve. Together, we'll take a look at some of the challenges, victories that agencies are experiencing on their transformation journeys. So you ready to jump into this, Chris? Let's get going. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, we talked to many different government customers and agencies out there over the years. Uh, you know, in 2020, agencies seemed to be on their heels a bit. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't about digital transformation. It was about how do we get all these people to work from home, like productively. Uh, in 2021, they kind of came out of the, okay, we, we all know how to work remotely. Let's start actually trying to modernize some things. So transformation seemed to be about kind of digitizing existing workflows, using cloud technologies, automation, mobile solutions. And now I can't believe it. We're almost the end of February in 2022. But as we embark into 22, um, you get the sense that this is shaping to be a different kind of year. At the end of the year, you know, go, go 10 months in the future. What do you think we'll say transformations have been about for government agencies? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And it's so impossible these days to think about anything from a transformational perspective without thinking about the impact the pandemic's had. And I think first and foremost, what I think about is the pandemic was really an accelerator for a lot of transformation initiatives that agencies were thinking about. They were forced to do things. They had to have a rapid reaction. So, you know, as we went through 20 into 21, it was really about how do you, how did agencies understand what they had to respond to? to be able to transform that workforce, to be able to do remote work, to be able to bring more cloud in a secure and performant way to deliver on their mission. And as we look to 22, I think the main thing we're gonna see is they're gonna harvest the best outcomes that they had from those reactions and turn them into their common practice, their new normal, if you will. They're the way that they go about delivering that mission in a different, more technology enabled way. So specifically in 22, I think we're gonna see the continued, but maybe more deliberate adoption of cloud. We're gonna see a, a continued transformation of the workforce. I don't think we're gonna say things like, I'm working from home or I'm in the office. I think there's just a new hybrid work model. We're gonna see that just become how things get done. And then lastly, maybe what we're gonna see more and more of, or a, rapid, a more uh, rapid adoption of is that the multi-party systems, so different agencies delivering different functions so that agencies are more focused on their core competencies in delivering that mission. So full stack solutions maybe don't need to be provided at every agency anymore. Some agency may be providing collaborative workspace tools. Some may be providing cloud operating platforms where the true mission systems, the true outcome where that value is delivered, we're gonna see that continue to rise and that acceleration increase. Interesting. Um, actually, one thing, uh, if you don't mind, you talk about like, hey, obviously we tried a whole bunch of things over a couple of years, agencies and agencies are gonna kind of double down on a few things that have worked um, without obviously naming specific clients unless you're allowed to. Do you have an example of one or two of those where you said, hey, that was actually a massive success and we're gonna try and you know scale it over the next couple of years? Oh, absolutely. There's a whole bunch of those. And you can look at the focus that agencies took on digital workforce transformation as one. That's the low-hanging fruit in, that, in this answer, right? The enablement of a secure remote workforce that did not have to commute to a physical space anymore, um, that can then change the overall paradigm, not only on how the workforce and where they are, but where agencies can draw from the workforce. The, the aperture of who's available to be working at an agency significantly widened now because, hey, now we've got this ability to do things remote and that really allows better skills and a much bigger pool to be brought. So we've been working with agencies uh, all around federal, quite frankly, to be able to look at that that way and think differently about how do I get the right resources with the right skills to deliver that value for me? So that's kind of one big thing. 
I think that the second, the second thing is really the change to uh, you know, bringing innovation into the DNA of an agency, right? We've been working with a lot of agencies and uh, I'll pull one in for specifically, um, anonymously specifically, I guess, uh, in the, the financial sector market where they have really pivoted their mindset from we're doing big projects and big transformation initiatives to change is a normal thing that we do now. Like innovative culture is, is a big hurdle to get over, but once you're over it, reacting to changes in regulations or you know, things like the pandemic that we hope never happens again or you know, doesn't continue, um, they don't, it doesn't become a seismic event to respond to those things anymore. You know how to handle change and you're constantly changing and improving because of that innovation in your DNA. And I think, I think adopting that mindset is the biggest change that we'll see 22 onward and is gonna yield the most value for those agencies that actually adopt that for real. Yeah, the, uh, obviously that's like the heart of what agile methodologies, if you wanna use agile as, as is all about, it's you know predicting the future is a nearly impossible thing. The best you can do is set up your organization technically and culturally to adapt as new things come along, which is hard. I mean, it's like- <laughs> Again, it's extremely hard to do this. It's not a simple task and it requires you know, commitment to it. But if you're committed to that and you're vested in it, all these technical things that get thrown your way, all these regulatory things that get thrown your way, it's like, yeah, I know how to do this. I handled the pandemic. I handled cloud. I can handle the cyber EO. I know how to do all these things. It's not a big deal anymore because your culture is set up. It's all about that commitment to it transforming your organization to adopt to it and then as the as the as the challenges fly at you you can handle them it's not a big deal no oh, i think that is a perfect setup for the next question because all of you what you said just said right there is not that easy so like despite the combination of you know environmental factors we're forced to change executive mandates additional funding you know many agencies are still struggling with these transformations, right? Uh, and the stat we have is 88% of federal employees when surveyed say their agency's digital initiatives are behind. So why do you think that is? What should they be doing about it? Well, I think one, there was just a uh, significant repurposing of talent and funding and time uh, to address some of these rapid response initiatives to deal with the pandemic. I mean, that's just a simple fact, one. Uh, two, I think what we've seen is a project-based focus for transformation. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit here. I'm going to do a little cloud. I'm going to do a little advanced cyber. I'm going to bring the data thing in. I'm going to do some machine learning or applied intelligence or robotic process automation. I'm going to start doing those types of things, but they were projects. Um, the reason why they're behind is because you have to commit to enterprise transformation. You've got to go all in. You got to go all in with your key enterprise systems that service your actual mission. So you've got to be focused on that enterprise transformation. You got to be all in. Uh, secondly, I think where we've seen is agencies uh, try to do too much at once. They realize, hey, I've got to get to cloud. Hey, I've got to get zero trust. Hey, I've got to do a replatform of whatever it may be, my data platform, my application framework, um, whatever. And, I, and, and I'm going to do all that at once as part of this enterprise initiative thing, because that's what I've committed to, or that's what I have to do. And I think getting an agency to understand that you can achieve all those things in a logical manner that's actually focused on getting value as, at the forefront for what your mission is, and then making smart choices along the way of what you're going to do in what sequence to deliver on that value in a repetitive way. And ideally, they're doing that transition to that innovative culture at the same time. So this is just the journey that starts, but just continues and continues and continues and continues. So I think, you know, the main reason for that I've seen is trying to put too many eggs in the basket at once. There's a lack of clarity as to what's important and what the priority is. And then you, you just, you get in that state of, you know, I, I'm just trying to do, I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do, and nothing actually ends up getting accomplished and you end up falling behind. And then a new change comes along with a new technology or a new platform or a new regulation perhaps. And then you say, oh, well, that doesn't make sense anymore. I got to start all over and redo it. So it's smaller focused mission-driven outcomes is going to be the way that you don't fall behind and you get that success on an incremental and an ongoing basis. Yeah. The, uh, talking to many clients, I, I, in, 
it's someone on fault of our parts with it. Hey, you must digitally transform. Like it's something that just must be done and then is over. Right. And like, it's all, and the reality is, you know, digital transformation, modernization, whatever you want to call it, along with the cultural change, is not a project. Yeah. It, it require it will never be done. Like, let's just all of a sudden, like three years from now, all our technology projects will be done and everyone in IT can go home is a, it's a ridiculous concept. It, it, like, it is going to be about constant transformation to be, once again, embrace everything that's changing around your agencies and your constituents behind them. Absolutely. And I think you said something that I want to just uh, kind of double down on. I think what sometimes gets heard when we say, and I say this all the time, it's never going to be done, is, oh, well, that I'm never going to accomplish what I'm set out to do. It's actually the opposite of that. I'm going to get value sooner and more on a recurring basis, as opposed to I've got this big thing and I'm going to go out and do it and drop it and then breathe. Well, no, right? You're going you're gonna to start to do these smaller things more incremental and you're going to get value, value, value. And again, that just becomes your normal way of doing things. So it's not, uh, it's never done isn't a bad thing. It's never done is a mindset shift to say, I'm going to just deliver value on a reoccurring basis forever. Um, yeah, I, I say the same thing here at Atlassian, which is, hey, the day we're bored is the day we all have to worry. Right. Like, it's just like, you got to keep on innovating to keep going forward. Um, so uh, related to this, you say, you know, many, many folks that uh, talk about transformation as a set of technology projects. And in the prior session, I talked about one of the principles of transformation success is to maintain a people centric focus, much less about the tech. It's much about how the people work around this and rethink about how to achieve the services mission, starting with the recipient of the services and the team providing them then transform your culture processes and tools around those two sets of needs. Um, I'd love for you to, I'm sure you deal with this with your clients all the time. You know, what's your view of that whole situation? Yeah, I think, I mean, fundamentally, we could not agree more with what you just said around, it, it is all about the people. Um, the technology, you know, the cliche is the technology is the easy part. I mean, that's not exactly true. Um, if it were true, I might not, you know, have a job. Uh, the technology is challenging, but it's really about adopting the technology, and that requires your your organizational transformation to be there. Um, so I so I really agree with that, and I think as we look out on what's going to be different uh, in this 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 new paradigm, but it's going to be newer job models, sure organizational transformation and reskilling and retraining, absolutely. Um, but I think we're gonna see an increased balance between the, the human and the machine. We talk a lot about AI. Uh, AI I don't think is successful without it being a balance of the human and the AI you know, with transparency um, and a continuously impacted or in continuously improved model. Uh, that takes in newer considerations and you know ever evolving kind of data and the data uh, inputs, but it's going to be finding that right balance that actually propels that that change forward. Um, can you speak more to that, like that balance? Uh, once again, just it, it, if you have an example or so on, because you know it's a when I talk to clients, it's it's always a you know, it's hard to always laser in of okay, here here's how we're going to help your teams change. It's very easy to say we have a project. We have a list of deliverables and a roadmap. It's way different to say, and let's get all of your people to act in a different way, right? And yeah, and so like, do you have, you know, from your personal experience, like what, what, what have organizations done that have embraced that people and cultural change successfully versus the teams that still just get mired in the technical roadmap? Sure, I think first and foremost, the, uh, the, big, the big doom out there all the time is, oh, technology is going to come and transformation is going to take away my job, right? And I think first and foremost, it's addressing that head on. Uh, we've done that at a lot of agencies. It's, it's not that you know, applied intelligence or machine learning is coming to replace you, right? The answer is no. So it's, it's a very deliberate look at, you know, again, what does, your, what does your agency do? What is that mission uh, in this, in the AI data case, how is it? How is that leading you to better serve your constituents? And then, looking at what do those new roles look like? You know, there's there is no AI or ML without P 
people that are training that. There is no people that, there is no AR ML output without resources that are reviewing how it's that decisions being made and saying, mm, that's not exactly how we're thinking about what it should arrive at. Why is it coming to that decision? And is it the right data? Is there bias in the data? That, that sort of thing. There's a very human element to that. So one redefining new jobs and new roles uh, that fit and mix that are again, balanced with that technology is an opportunity for people to learn new skills and do different things. Um, and secondly, it's a necessary requirement for to be able to truly leverage or maximize the output or the value you're going to get from those emer these emerging techs or technologies. Um, and I say emerging, they're not really emerging, they're really here and prevalent now. But bringing them into that agency, it's, it's not like you come in and say, I'm going to put AI on and press a button and phew, everything's done, right? It's not that. You have to train it. It's all about the data. It's about what are the insights and the outputs that you're getting? Is it what you expected? If it's not, why? Um, how could you add additional information? And I think there's a huge, huge human element of that. So you know, we'll come in and we'll look at what is that mission? What is that data? How do you think about what your existing job roles are? What are the future job roles? And what do those skill profiles look like? And then how do we take an agency on a journey to get there? Um, so that, you know, that, that, that job description may change, right? It may be something that, you know, what you did before is not what you do tomorrow or today, but it's going to be different and you're still going to have a valuable contribution to that agency and to that mission. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. The, uh, uh, obviously we deal this with a lot just to helping on the culture and agile side of these big projects. And I'm sure, you know, you know, the, the executives will bring in something like Accenture to come in and do help with these large projects or, you know, choose to standardize on Alassian tools. You know, the, what I continue to show is it's, it's impossible to make a top-down mandate where it says we must transform everyone, right? And as equally as it's nearly impossible for an individual or a team to transform a broad agency. Right? And that is always this balance between those two, where you, you need the top-down guidance and vision, but really to help empower those teams that are going to do all the work and, and have to embrace the change while addressing their personal fear. You mentioned my, my job's going to change, my role's going to change, it's, but well, yeah, to get over that fear and have that trust between you know, what we're trying to do from a top-down strategic perspective and how we need to change at the team level. Um, and it's all... Yeah, it's all cultural. It's all communications. It's all about how we bring the teams along in that journey, um, which oftentimes can be the death of a project if you actually don't have all that aligned. I, I think I could not agree with that more. And I think earlier when we were talking about why do these big, you know, transformational initiatives fail, I think it because it is a top-down mandate without commitment, right? It's a top-down mandate that we shall move to cloud without an understanding that that's not a you know, go and go and move stuff to a hyperscale or a cloud environment. It's about that organizational transformation. And in order for that to be successful, you need that organization to be vested in that change at the leadership level, supported that that leadership level needs to really support the rationale of why this is happening and the value that it delivers, not just to, you know, the constituents of the, or of the mission, but also to the people that are providing it. And they have to get excited about what is happening and why, and that they're going to learn new skills and continue to add maybe the same or increased value to that mission. I think that that is really how transformation can be successful. Um, I think the, the positive in all this is I think we're seeing that now. Like this isn't just a mandate of, oh, someone said I've got to do X, so I'm going to go do that. Someone is like, hey, I want to get to here. And in order to do that, I need to do these things. And I'm vested in making sure that we're able to do that. And I'm going to bring the right partners in. I'm going to bring the right expertise in. And I'm going to lay out a solid roadmap that is just as much technology as it is organization and culture and recognize all those things uh, against the constantly changing environment and know that change is good. And what I think today is not exactly how it's going to turn out tomorrow and being okay with that. And I think those hurdles are big things. Uh, I, and I have to nail that piece because I see this time and again, but when you have a very set culture, a very set way of doing things, you know, and then regardless of where it comes from, a grand idea to transform how we're delivering value to our constituents, you know, or our customers or what have you. And it is so easy when you're sitting there in these projects to just talk about the 3000 ways this is going to go wrong, you know, and 
and then having to consciously realize that like you don't have every single answer up front. It's impossible in any project to have every single answer to avoid every single piece of blocker that we have. You have to have trust that the team can rally around the blockers as they come also have the flexibility to adapt to those blockers and which may make that destination look a little bit different than the original vision, which is perfectly fine. But the fact is that is, that is the cultural, like, which is otherwise teams can just shut down, say, this is crazy. We're never going to get there. The way we always did it is fine. Yeah. And once you get those hurdles, the projects just kind of you know, fall apart. I, I couldn't agree more with that, but what you talked about there is it, it's, you have to, there's just, it is, I kind of could have the trust in the culture, the trust that we're going to run into new things that we don't have answers for now, but we have a team and a culture and, and around us that we can address anything that hits us. I mean, even if you, uh, even if you could get all the answers now, right. Even if you could say, Hey, what are the, what are the thousands of questions? And miraculously you got all the answers. Those answers are going to change because there's factors that are going to be introduced that you didn't foresee. And next thing you know, you, those answers that you thought were so right, they're definitely wrong. And you're going to end up, if you have that, uh, you know, we, we're, we're doing work at an agency today where they had a very, they're, they're all a very, very high performing people. And they were very focused on achieving this cloud objective. We're going to get to the cloud and we're going to migrate our systems there and we're going to do all this stuff. And they were very set on that. And, and I, I applaud them for having a very, a clarity and vision and a drive for that vision. But where they are today, after going through the initial phases of that, is a very different place and how they think about what their what cloud and what new technology can actually deliver for them. And that the organizational element of, was not only the hardest part, but the most rewarding part. And they, they'll be the first to stand up and say, hey, what we thought we were going to do, um, and, and I would have bet the farm that we were going to do exactly what we set out to do. We're doing something totally different now. And it's actually better because they embrace that mindset of, I know it's going to change. Let's just go and do it. Yeah. Um, well, I think we can add on to that about, you know, there's, this is at the project level or, you know, I'll, but there's different size sets of transformations that people take on. And, and obviously, you know, as, as you scale things up, life gets a little bit harder. <laughs> um, a recent Gar Gartner survey of government organizations around the world found that 55% of government teams were failing to scale their digital projects effectively. Um, why do you think that is? What do you think agencies can do to set themselves up to address you know, scale specifically? I think the problem with scale can take three different angles. Uh, one can be the actual technical scale. Um, you know, you can have a digital tra digital transformation or transformation is not a new concept that came out with cloud, right? Um, there's been transformation going on forever. Um, it's there's so there's this this technical angle that to be able to scale uh, and and adapt the business uh, as data grows exponentially you know second by second nanosecond by nanosecond you know the new technologies afford the ability to do that transformation unlike before uh, there's things you could never do um, in a in a legacy kind of on premises world that you that well you could perhaps do them but they're extremely high barrier to entry from a cost perspective or a talent perspective. Um, so, so cloud gives you that ability. Uh, if we take digital twins as an example, you know, I want to collect real-time sensor data. I want to mirror my physical operational world in the virtual world. I want to bring every kind of factor that might impact that, whether it's weather or resources or geopolitical conditions, who knows, whatever. I, I can do that now in cloud. We're doing that before now and scaling that to get the output that I wanted was prohibitive or if not impossible in some scenarios. So one, technology is there that wasn't necessarily there before. Two, when you think about scale, it can come back to the people, the resources that we're talking about. It's, it, is about it is about people, it is about talent, it is about skills, it is about experience and expertise. So that's not infinitely scalable. Um, you know, I, as far as I can tell, I don't think we've quite mastered cloning yet, right? So uh, Elon might have a different point of view on that, I don't know. But um, at the end of the day, we cannot just scale talent exponentially like we can technical resources. So we have to make smart decisions on back to what is the priority on our mission? Um, what is the most benefit we're gonna get? And then how do we build upon that? So we prioritize our people at the right challenges 
um, so they can achieve them and then move on to the next thing. Um, so, so that can be a, a contention of scale. And then lastly, maybe is there's a struggle with scaling because there's a limitation of, of vision, perhaps. Um, and a, a you, know, you mentioned this earlier, kind of a holding on to the old. This is how we've always done it. Uh, this is how we've we've been successful before. Like, why do we have to change? Like, we've done we've been great before because there's a there's a there's an unknown out there. Of, well, you don't even know what you could be doing uh, because you're just doing it like you used to. So that that ability to scale your vision um, that can be constraining sometimes, and could perhaps be some of the hardest things to get over. Um, I think it is about finding the right partners. It is about finding the right experience. It is about looking, you know, left and right to what others are doing that uh, are, you know, in your in your other other agencies or departments, or maybe other, you know, other government agencies that are doing it internationally. Like bringing all that together and generating those ideas to fuel that vision, uh, that can be a that can be a limiter on scale as well. So it's you know, it's one, it's technology. Two, it's the actual talent and people on the ground, and three, it's the you know, the the vision. How how wide can you go? Yeah, the uh, that last piece one resonates a lot because I talk to, you know, you know the people that are implementing these projects, doing these things, and like, and it's very easy where, you know, just maintaining what we have is taking 110 percent of our energy and capacity and brain power, right? Uh, and then someone from on high or a big project, we must transform and do everything different, and you're like. How do, how do I make room, help, help provide that guidance? So not only having that vision where people get bought in, but also ensuring that we have the capacity, the people, the teams behind it to make room, <laughs> not only for people to get faith that, hey, we can actually deliver upon this vision, but also actually really put the energy into taking your expertise towards those new projects. So Chris, with the single largest influx of technology funding ever for government agencies to modernize, we're seeing a new era of government program management emerge. We're seeing agencies drive towards improved transparency. We talked about improved agility and accountability throughout the program cycle, not just at the project end. How are you seeing project and program management kind of evolving in the new government agency world? I think the, the first thing is what we've been touching on throughout. It's that, it's that pivot from you know, project into maybe program into more of the true enterprise transformation and enterprise focus. Um, that isn't to say that projects themselves are bad, right? You, there's been great success and great learnings in project specific, you know, you know, cloud transformation, cloud projects for a specific workload at an agency has been great. They learned a lot about it. They realized what worked. They knew where the holes were. They knew where their gaps that they needed to fill. So that's been great. But I think it's now time to get real, right? It's, you got to go all in top down your most important workloads to deliver on your value to achieve to really achieve that enterprise value that you're after so so one i think that focus from uh i'm trying things with new technology to see where it's going to go into that technology is proven and ready and is going to deliver value one that we can see and two that we haven't even foreseen or thought about yet that time is now so that shift is going to happen yeah I was going to, the only other thing I think too, is really talking about the talent again. Like it's going to be the best talent within an enterprise focused. And that talent may be uh, within the agency itself. It may be partners that work in that agency uh, like us um, that are going to really fuel that, that, that transformation growth and adoption. Um, like really like we've been talking about the whole time today. I think that will be the biggest shift is it is the priority. These transformational programs are what is going to take an agency uh, to the next level to better deliver uh, to their constituents in this rapidly ever-changing, unforeseen world. I mean, it sounds silly, but you know, if we go back a couple of years, I'm pretty sure none of us would have predicted that we're all going to be working in our basements or home offices for a real extended period of time and actually have very little to no drop off in that productivity and delivering on what we do. So, I mean, I think that's what we're gonna see is these transformational initiatives are real. We're gonna see the full backing of the agency from it. We're already seeing that. And the top talent and the top partners are gonna be driving the top programs and they're gonna achieve those outcomes that they're after. Yeah, the uh, one uh, the, to, to add on to that from what I've seen, actually one of my, very first meetings when I started last year, many years ago, uh, I was talking with a CIO of a one of a very, very, very large bank. And 
Uh, they, they had embraced Atlassian products. They had embraced agile methodologies. And he told the stories like, and then my team came to me and said it was done. But it wasn't done, done. And I didn't understand what done, done meant. And we were talking about it. They had an MVP that got done, but they had more milestones. And, and I find that the terminology and vocabulary, whether it's going from, you know, project to program to product or whether it's outputs over outcomes or output, sorry, outcomes over outputs. Like there's a whole new terminology around how we talk about these large multi-scale transformations and programs that is critical because without that agreed upon language, it gets very easy to miscommunicate actually the status of where we are in this journey and where we need to go. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the, the, the definition of done or, uh, you know, I've said this throughout our discussion today, uh, getting that innovative mindset or innovative, getting that innovation into the DNA of your culture is, is so critical. And in doing so, you know, done is a word you don't really want to hear. It's next, right? It's what's next? What are we going to deliver value on next? And how are we going to do that? And how are we going to leverage this new emerging technology or new emerging methodology that's come into play to deliver the next set of value? So done goes away. It's now next. Nice. Okay, well, I got two more questions for you. And at this point, you get to predict the future for everyone listening. So uh, I'm, I'm, uh, hopefully you'll get it right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. So, Just based uh, on everything I've been saying is I was saying you can't predict the future. Yeah. <laughs> but sure, I'll do it. That's okay. Well, then you can give multiple potential futures. How about that? Okay, well, we'll be agile. Um, so 10 years from now. Yeah, like hope, you know, hopefully the pandemic 10 years from now will have felt it, but it's not driving our day-to-day -day decisions. So the pandemic and its impact on government modernization, like, what do you think will emerge? Like, we'll look back 10 years from the future and go like, hey, that was actually a big changing time. What were the three biggest takeaways if we had to sum up all those changes? I think first and foremost, we're going to look back on the pandemic, uh, as I mentioned at the outset, as a, as a catalyst for this change a catalyst for the acceleration of this change, not the driver of the change. I think there's a lot of uh, smart folks out there that have been doing enterprise transformation work and bringing new technologies in for quite a while now. I think the, the pandemic was really just an accelerator for those ideas based on necessity. And I think the three things we'll see is, is really what we've been talking about this whole time. First and foremost, it's there's a new workforce model and I think that takes two dimensions, one being, you know, physically where we are as humans, right? Where do we sit? Uh, where, how do we interact with delivering that value for what we do day in, day out? Um, I think that notion of I'm working from home today doesn't, will, won't make sense anymore. It's just you're working, right? So I think that new workforce model from the physical location will be different. And two, I think in that same, that same, uh, in that same lens, it's going to be, how do we leverage and better integrate with the technology? How does the human plus machine actually realize that new working, that new workforce, that new delivery model? Um, and again, we'll think you know, AI or ML assisted jobs and, and automation and everything we do, it won't be seen as a danger. It'll be seen as, you know, this is how I get what I'm doing done. Um, so that's one. Two, I, I, I firmly believe that culture of innovation will be not something that I talk about and have to ever like explain or give examples about because everyone will go, yeah, of course, that's, that is how we do things. There is no done. We're always improving. We're always looking to see what's better. We're, we're analyzing the data and, and we're bringing more data in to get better insights and better uh, outputs. We're constantly improving our processes. We're making things more accessible and transparent. And we're doing that in a socially responsible way, uh, sustainability and, and things like that. So I think that that innovative culture will become just how everyone does things. Um, and then lastly, uh, I think if nothing else, the pandemic has proved that the things that the naysayers said couldn't be done were done and they were accomplished. And they really, in some cases, exceeded expectations and, and improved productivity and output in, in ways that, that the naysayers would have said, nah, we don't need to do that. Or VDI is just for emergencies or uh, I, I don't want to enable a remote workforce because they're not getting their jobs done. Like all of that stuff will go away. So the third point is about, I think we will see an, 
it, people will embrace the new technology, not try to shoot it down. Now, do I think everyone's going to be sitting around singing Kumbaya, like I love new technology and let's all get in the metaverse and, and like do our jobs? No, no, there still will be those that resist, those that need to validate. And I think that's good. I think challenging the, the newer technologies and newer methods is a good thing that's there. But I don't think it'll be in a, in a mindset to shoot it down. I think it'll be in a mindset to prove its value and that it can be adopted and it fits in with that organizational innovative culture. Um, as opposed to being something that said, I just want to keep doing what I used to do. Um, and this new thing is scary. So I'm going to find reasons why it can't work. I think that will go away. It will be, I'm going to find reasons why it does work and why this ever increasing landscape of new technology can be adopted to fit my specific needs and my specific mission. Um, I think on that note, I Obviously, we could talk way more about all of these topics, but I think that's a, I think you summed up the entire situation quite well. And then 10 years from now, if we deliver upon those three things and have that feeling there, I think we've done, uh, everyone here will be very, very successful. So well, we'll, be, we'll um, be back here in 10 years and we'll figure out if I was right or not. Uh, so we'll sounds, do it. <laughs> absolutely. I'll, uh, let's get it on the calendar now. <laughs> uh, obviously, there's lots more to discuss here. Uh, I'd love to dive in a little deeper, but unfortunately, we're at the end of our time for today. Chris, Thank you so much for being with us today and sharing your insight and experience. Thank you so uh, much. It was great being here, Cameron. Yeah, fantastic conversation. Uh, it's easy to see why the work that you and the team at Accenture Federal do is so critical to the agencies you serve. Stay tuned for the next presentation where Atlassian Solutions Engineer Ken Urban will share how JIRA work management helps coordinate the, and empower non-technical teams to more effectively plan, track, and report out on the work that moves the mission forward. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks.